Hello guys and welcome back to my Fate Grand Order Water Monster Crisis gameplay. So yeah, let us continue on the story. So here we go. This is where we stopped. Now I did a little bit of farming. Hopefully this is enough for this one and the next one. Um, so yeah, let's let's see. Okay, so I think I chose that I will be doing this one, the colony one. So let's do this. So I want to see like a futuristic, you know. Damn. There you go. It's like a UFO, kind of. Okay. This is your basic bedroom. It's very clean and simple and has excellent G-force dampening. Okay. <laughs> it's floating. So this is, this whole ship is made of steel, huh? I can't even begin to imagine how this technology works. <laughs> the corn is like floating. And this is the hallway. It's wide enough that you could have two Professor Babagans walk <laughs> shoulder to shoulder while literally blowing off steam. Oh boy. Well, I guess that probably bang into each other since the steam would mean they cannot actually see. Who are you talking about? Well... <laughs> oh damn! That's a cockpit. And that's not all. I also had them build this cockpit to complete the whole colony shape package. The console is purely aesthetic right now so it doesn't actually work as a spaceship but I also made sure it can be expanded. Let's just say I'm looking forward to the next season. Yeah, Saber Wars 3? Huh? The window? Just a space wallpaper. What is it? Is there something behind me? Oh, for, did you try to trick me, you little rascal? There's obviously nothing there. Well, they're floating, so, you know. Hmm, an anti-gravity device. I was thinking, I was like, how are they floating? I th okay, this, I'm afraid this ship doesn't have one of those yet either. Those are really expensive. So how are they floating like that? So how are the corn floating around like that? Yeah. We just felt... Oh. <laughs> we just felt like floating. I think we might fit really well in outer space. Hmm. I don't know what the deal is with these things. Maybe they're from far reaches of Servantverse somewhere. I could see them being aliens for some undiscovered planet. Maybe they're the descendants of a race that escaped an ancient star system before it exploded or something. Anyway, don't worry. I don't have any problems with them hanging around as long as they're not sabers. <laughs> wow, way to go, X. You really are a genius at bringing properties from who knows where. You may have been way on the nose with your theme, but you still did a good job with this colony ship thing. I agree, we don't have we won't have to worry about rain in the, at all in here, and the cons seem to like it a lot too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much everyone. They really do look like they're spacewalking. Right. They're just mimicking, you know, how it's supposed to be now the space okay right and there we go okay so inside singing invitation to eternity right hmm. Once we solved the corn housing problem, we decided to move on to the fourth area. <laughs> the corn finally outfitted with quality weapons, durable armor and vehicles that kept them in high spirits, seemed confident in their ability to tackle whatever came next. Even with the reports of yet another unfamiliar water monster in the next area, we couldn't let our fears get the better of us. And so, they set out to execute the plan, keeping vigilant and trusting their experience up to this point. However, hmm. Okay, what's happening? I do hate turning tail and running away. Still, at least we did not suffer too many casualties, which makes this more of a strategic retreat. It's not about the casualty count, Empress. It's the morale, you know. The fact that these casualty there were casualties at all is something we need to reflect on. Yeah. Was it that bad? We couldn't do anything except for run for it. 
Unfortunately, this next enemy is bad news too. Okay. I had the same thought when we faced the Kelpie, but it looks like psychological attacks are the cons weaknesses. True, it does seem like they're too trusting for their own good sometimes, yeah. Yes, I think so too. The con were instantly trapped in the enemy's tempo and helpless to break free. So, what happened? Some time ago. Oh, these are ghosts now. What? Because once we knew the new water monsters, they really do look like human women. Okay, what are they? They spotted us. Watch out for... Huh? Oh, no. Wait, are these sirens? Oh my god, these are sirens? I thought for a moment that these are ghosts. No, these are sirens. Are they singing? That's not all, look! They're dancing, making the water bodies ripple and sway. That isn't just any random movements that look like dance, they're doing it on purpose, I can tell. They're keeping to a rhythm and a consciousness of every move they make, all the way down to the tips of their fingers. They're using their body's undefined form to move about freely calculating every move, even any droplets they may splash. Aha, that's beautiful! Pretty boys! Right, there you go. Huh? Not again, get back here! Oh my god, Vritra's here. We, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm loving the show. I'm going to watch up close. Great, Vritra also. Now, Vritra's been sucked into the water too, and after she really came to help without being asked. Yeah, these are sirens, I'm pretty sure. They're sucking them in the water. She calls that helping? <laughs> they caught some of the con too. This is just like what happened with the Kelpie. Looks like we've got no choice but to retreat. Great. Now what do we do? Back like nothing. <laughs> hmm, I can't believe they managed to lure even me in with their singing and dancing. Those creatures are as cunning as Endra. I think it's more that you're just really really vulnerable to that kind of temptation. Looks like it's up to me to fill you in again. Those monsters you saw today were probably Rusalki. Ah, okay. So... They're from Russia, I'm guessing? Because I've never never heard of that. I, I, like, I, I thought like that was like more like a siren. Because, you know, that's what sirens do. But sirens do have like a mermaid type of, you know, like a body structure, I think. And they, yeah, yeah, they do have like a mermaid type of body structure. And they call in sailors and drag them down into the water. Something like that. The legend says that they use singing and dancing to lure people in and pull them underwater. That's true, like, you know, they were dancing as well. Like, sirens don't do that, though. Because, you know, they're more like mermaids. Um, so yeah. Okay. Some people think uh, Rusalka is a Vornoi's wife. Oh! But nobody knows for sure. I honestly don't care. <laughs> Rusalka? So they're from the same Eastern European region as the Vornoi. I wonder if that means anything. Nah, probably not. No, this is like a pattern. Like, yeah. Hell this day. Oh, you're alright. That's a relief. It was close. I was almost lunch. But I've already seen already seen Nam Lam. You're better than any monster. Is that so? I'm flattered. Wait, hold on. Does this mean if Khan know about some other kinds of art and entertainment? Yeah, that's a good point. They wouldn't be drawn to the Rusalki's singing and dancing anymore? Sounds like it. We just got a great hint. We're going to have to bolster the cons resistance to the Rusalki's singing and dancing just like we did with the Kelpie school factor. Now I can guess someone who might be able to help in this. I'm pretty sure they'll bring her in. Uh, Matahari. Definitely. Matahari is definitely going to be able to help in this. Anyone else? Singing and dancing. For a moment in my head, I thought about Elizabeth and then I'm like, wait, why Elizabeth? What am I even on about? <laughs> in no way. I don't even know why I thought of it. Thought of that. <laughs> if if the cons hear Elizabeth singing, they'll probably run towards the Rusalkis. <laughs> to get away from it. <laughs> oh no. Right. Uh, anyone else? Singing, dancing, singing, dancing. I no. The, the only person who immediately came into my head was Matahari, and that's it. Okay. 
And to do that, I think we'll have to give them a little culture. Like my water top ballet. That's a good idea and all, but there are too many con here for even me to get to them, them a solid cultural education alone. And even if I could, I don't want to cheapen my art with too many repeat performances. My rule is one show a day. Well then, I think we'll have to build some kind of a cultural art center. That sounds fine to me, but exactly what sort of facility should we build? <laughs> okay, Nero, okay, interesting. So, you wish to create a building to teach ignorant masses the glory of true entertainment, the Colosseum? In that sense, that is exactly what I dedicated my entire reign to achieving. I speak, of course, of, oh, so they're saying that they, oh, I thought, I thought they will be bringing people in to teach, like, you know, to show them, like, dancing and singing. No, they're talking about, like, structure which will help in, like, entertaining them. So, obviously, Colosseum is one. Okay. I speak, of course, of... <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> an arcade, yes. I'm certain that must be it. Bruh. <laughs> that actually is, you know what, kind of good. Like, video game addiction? Yeah, they'll, they'll, not, go, <laughs> they'll not go anywhere <laughs> near the result keys because they'll be... They'll be Preoccupied playing video games. <laughs> for what better represents modern entertainment than a center for games of the video? Don't forget about VR and MMORPGs. You can forget everything in these worlds. Reality, your weight. <laughs> Deadline. <laughs> yeah. Okay, these three. No, no, no. I'm speaking of the theater, of course. How do you interrupt me again? Okay, theater. All right. Only in the theater can patrons enjoy singing, poetry, stage plays, concerts, and so much more. That is why a golden theater made by, and for me, is the only possible choice. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Um, it may be presumptuous of me to suggest this, but I don't think that any discussion of entertainment or culture would be complete without books and reading. Library? Okay. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, it might be really nice to have a library. Games, books, song and dance, huh? I can tell those all don't sound like fun. I think I, the con would probably enjoy any of these. They've always loved playing. So just choose whichever you one you'd prefer. Hmm, what should it be? Yeah, I'm kind of going towards games or um, the theater. Which one should I do? It'll be hilarious if the cons play video games. But then again, like, Nero's here as well, so... Uh... Like, I would have gone for uh, Nero, but I have to do an arcade. I, I just want to see the cons playing video games. That would be pretty hilarious. So, let's go with an arcade. Yep. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> okay. C come perfect. Okay, here we go. Sakabe so means um yeah, lingo. They got a ton of different genres here: action, shooters, puzzle, fighting. They even have large motion simulator cabinets, and even better, they're all completely free to play. <laughs> if this is not the pinnacle of culture and entertainment, I do not know what is. Take a look, the con are already being drawn to the oversized cabinets. What's happening? Oh no, I failed to consider their size. Oh yeah. Damn, the little arms can only reach the stick or the buttons, not both. We really screwed up. Why not team up, you know? Hmm, hang on, check that out. Yeah, we each can like, you know, like control one. That's good. You know what's funny? They've got one con on one stick and on buttons and they're totally having fun. It's kind of funny because this reminded me of a memory. I remember, you know, like, uh, way back, um, like, when I used to play games and stuff, and my friends used to come, I remember doing it like this, like, one, like, since, you know, like, I didn't have, like, multiplayer games, 
one person would sit on the movements and the other person would control the mouse. It would be very difficult though. But we used to have fun like that, you know, or like maybe like a fighting game. Like one person would control like one set of like actions and another person would control another set of actions or something like that. You know, uh, yeah, it worked somehow back then. And uh, yeah, that's how we used to have fun playing single player games, but with more than one people. And this kind of reminds me of that. <clears throat> Single player speed control co-op. I never would have thought of that. I'm impressed they can play that way. We used to play it like this back then, you know. Yeah. Like internet and multiplayer wasn't really a thing then. Nowadays it's so easy to play multiplayer games. If you all you need is like a phone. There's so many plenty of multiplayer games that you can literally play using your phones. And every single person has a phone nowadays. So yeah, it's very easy. But yeah, it wasn't like that. Oh boy. I'm impressed they can play that way. Well, that is a relic for the time being. <laughs> but we should still look into adjusting the controls for one player. Oh, hello. Hi, Batram. Thank you for coming. Wow, it's so lively in here. It's so crazy because literally the previous one, we did the UFO and they were like very impressed by the like modern like stuff. This one as well, like video games weren't a thing back then. So they would be very surprised seeing stuff like this. It's so lively in here. That's a nice way of saying noisy, but as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, it can be a little loud at first. We can turn the volume down if you want. So shall I start by explaining the key fundamental? Okay, all right. I feel like a few of them are okay. This one's absolutely insane. <laughs> key and fundamentals, okay. Hmm. So you used a stick and these buttons to control the characters on the screen, huh? Hmm. It does seem like fun, but I think it might take some time for us to get used to it. I've never been very familiar with games. How about you, Nii? You've always been the more playful of us. Mm, I don't know. I've always been better at more physical games. Yeah, makes sense. Don't worry. We've got games like that too. Air hockey. Yeah, okay, yeah. This is an arcade. There will be games like that. Laser tag, beanbag toss. Healthy stay. Come on, boss boss. Play with me. Well, I suppose we can... Should be able to handle those. Okay, you're on. So air hockey is a team game. There's, then there's no way we can lose. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> wow. I think we can at least keep up with these physical games. Hmm, what's this one with the balls and a hoop? What, basketball? Oh, that's a free throw game, yeah. The goal is to see how many times you can throw a ball through the hoop within a time limit. I wanna see how good you are, boss boss. Me too, go on, eh? See if you can break the record. Uh, okay, that's what you want, sister. Alright, let's do this thing. You look a little too into it, but I guess that's Daijoke. There's more than one way to have fun. And go! Like this, and here we go. <laughs> wow, you're doing super amazing. Right. Especially for your first time. My first time, huh? Didn't go nearly as well. I guess it all comes down to whether you're a jock or not. <laughs> She's really cutting it close on time though. Whether she tops the high score or not all comes down to the sinking to sinking this last basket. Oh no, the ball got stuck in the way back. This is going to slow her down. Oh? Yeah? Wait, did he just, she just throw the con? <laughs> okay. R will that work? I don't think so. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, that worked. Okay. She threw a con that came over to cheer her on by mistake and it counted. I guess probably because of the sensors, that's what it senses, like something went in. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, that was fun, new high score. Oh, a new game, I wanna play too. I've got a feeling this is gonna be a whole thing. <laughs> I don't think this is what they mean when they say to be the one with the ball. Wow. Okay, now we can go and defeat. 
Yeah. Oh, I feel like I might need to farm very soon. Good God. But first, let's do this area. 40, the battle to reclaim area 4. Hmm, what is happening? Why is it taking so long? Oh, there you go. Alright, let's see what happens this time. Hostiles detected and they've spotted you too. They're already trying to charm you. What about the con? I can't get the PGM out of my head. <laughs> I already know how to... <laughs> oh my god! Pawn this noobs! Fuckers! Their stance moves remind me of... Oh my god! What is... Okay, this is... Uh oh, they've already seen reality as a game. <laughs> I know, I always think about how I free run up a building when I see one IRL. Bruh. I find it always on the lookout for the loathsome campers of spawn when I see a steel tower. <laughs> you guys need to go out. Come on, man. Like, really? <laughs> this, this is the degree? <laughs> Bro. Nodding along knowing innocent. In knowing ascent. I don't think them not being able to distinguish game from reality is a good... It's good for now, at least, you know, because of the result cast. But being able to imagine fun alternate scenarios is a good thing overall. Looks like them getting some culture did help them resist this thing. Now that they can't manipulate the con anymore, our plan is the same as with the Kelpie. Attack and don't get dragged underwater. Then let's do it. Once we take care of the monsters, there will only be one area left to reclaim. Ah, okay. Hmm. Oyanskaya. Ah. Hmm. Megami mode. Goorin. Tappuri. Seno hiro suru to itashimashou. お前に。<笑> うん。あまり悩みそう。だ。どこから潰したもの。ヒコで、あつかってあげましょう。よく。あくまで彼に。それは返すにか滅びない。再果てにありなく。ゴリバースに。ローバス。キャメ。うん。ダム。ダスト よろしい。火の玉。火薬の匂い。あまり悩まない。地球を通してあげる。ほう。あくまで彼に。展開しましょう。そう。いいでしょう。私の足元で許しを超えます。落ちよ。ロードレス。キャメロット。Yo, Yo, that is some crazy damage. And there you go. 
I'm glad to see Master Spartan is victorious, not that I expected a different outcome. Right, Senpai has so much experience as a master, I was sure he wouldn't have any trouble with them. Same, alright, while the field team is taking while the field team is taking a well-earned break, I'd like to address some things that have been on my mind. Okay. Shame, Holmes is on leave. Oh, I was wondering why I couldn't see him. This would be a lot easier with him around. I know, but there's nothing we can do about that now. Besides, it's not like it's anything new. Anyway, what's on your mind? There's one place left to retake on this giant turtle island. So, I want to make sure we were all up to speed before heading into that battle. Specifically, I wanted to talk about our enemies, the water monsters Hybathrum and Gon have been facing. Hmm. Hmm. The first, oh my god, what? <laughs> the first type we encounter was Merfolk, okay? These things have so many traits that they feel like an indistinct mass. They seem to be related to mermaids and are known worldwide. Yeah, true. And they're like water based, so there's not much to tie them to any particular region, yeah? Indeed, next we encounter the hermit crab moths. I saw these creatures for myself. Yeah, they're from Japan, so okay. Such monsters are native to Japan, but these appear to be hermit crab variant. Okay. Then there was the bunyips from Australia. They were terrifying monsters with loud, intimidating cries. Okay. Merfolk, Japan, Australia. After that, there were the Vodanoi, which came from across the sea, across with a mist, uh, along with a mysterious mist. Those monsters are known throughout Russia. Okay. He said that they like to live near sluices, but I never thought they would be able to build their own sluices. And next was the Kelpie, water horses from Scotland. Okay. And. Most recently, the Rusalki, which some people believe are also the Vodnoy's wife, so I'm guessing they are also from Russia. The various origins of these monsters seem to be completely disparate, but I don't think we can say they're nothing alike either. Even the belief that Vodnoy's and Rusalki are married is just a theory. But I don't think that even comes from the same part of Russia. Okay. More importantly, I'm wondering what else these monsters have in common. I don't see anything in common, the only thing in common I can see is that all of them are somehow near water. Like you know, like the merfolk, um, and all of them. Like the Vodanois, the Rusalki, the, the Kelpies, the Hermit Crabs. Hmm. Not that, no that's difficult too, it's not like they have all, uh, that they all have certain things in common. I get the sense one of these monsters is the odd one out. Oh. Okay, one of them is the odd one out. Oh, um... Merfolk? Because they are... There's no particular region that they are confined to. You know, like every single um, creature that we have seen are somehow confined to one place. However, like... Merfolk, like mermaid merfolk, we hear it everywhere. This is not really like a place of origin, or is there? I'm not really sure. It's just a hunt, but I think it's significant. So the vast majority of these monsters have one thing in common, except one, and I think that one thing will be the hint. So what is it, Da Vinci? What is the more thing most of them have in common? Well, as it turns out, these water monsters are... Hmm, okay, great. If that's true, then what could it mean? And so they didn't tell us. They'll tell us later, okay. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to draw any conclusions yet. But I do think that it's a clue we need to start making progress on this mystery. In fact, I think it's the key to the question that's been bugging us all the time. Why have these Singularity's coordinates remained indecipherable? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Naval warfare preparations. Okay.
We're finally down to the last area. All aboard the hype train! <laughs> I'm get, I guess she's really excited about wrapping this up. So, where's the last area and just what sort of enemy are we going up against here? Hmm, how do I best explain this? Excuse me, Elder? Hmm, is it lunchtime? Oh, Elder, of course not. We just ate a while ago, remember? No, I just want to use your shell. Here, with this shell being the island, the last area is right around... Oh, oh, oh that tickles. But to be honest, I kind of like it. Hmm. I don't suppose anyone bought something. <laughs> <laughs> we can gag him. Of course, I never leave without home without a gag. It's worth mentioning that it'll be faster to read. <laughs> oh my god, yo. Uh, to rip out his tongue though, okay. Mm. <laughs> oh god. Ho oh, ho, I'm just kidding. As you can see, there are a lot more hollowed out areas here. That means there are a lot of places connected to the sea where water builds up. Okay. Well, more really, most of the areas are seawater and scattered within are small remote islands. Those islands are where we are heading next. The water monsters there are... The water monsters there are those folk things. I don't think they've got any tricks up their um, scales, but there's a lot of them in the area. This is the culmination of everything we've worked for. We need to take those... These last battles. Let's get club. <coughs> hmm. So, let me get this out of the way from up front. We need a boat. Hmm. Without one, we won't be able to reach the islands, let alone fight the monsters there. So, our last project's a passenger ship, huh? I kind of had the sense something like this might happen. Okay. So, I held a design competition and selected three companies that <laughs> met my exactly, if admittedly, biased standards. Incidentally, my criteria ended up being looks strong, looks fast, and can't explain why, but it looks fun. Alright, company number one, you're up. Go ahead and make your case. Okay, who is this? Ah, makes sense. It has to be a pirate ship, obviously. You need it for a fight, yeah? So you'll want it to be fast and armed, won't you? Well, there you go. Man, it's been way too long since our last naval battle. I can't wait. As to what kind of pirate ship, you've got several candidates to choose from. You could design one like the Golden Hind or... Shut it, Drakey. What are the choices there but the Queen, uh, but the Queen Anne's Revenge? I think the Royal Fortune is the most elegant option, personally. By the way, you there, the younger sister- Okay, nah man, stop! Stop it! Might I suggest moving your bands just a little to your right? Really, it won't have to be much. I really think it'll bring out your charm to an even greater degree. Wh what? Next, let's hear from the second company. This one requires incorporation of a surprising amount of technology. If you're gonna be making a ship, you ought to make one as stupid fast and fun as we can. But it needs to be like a... Um, okay. Know how some ships can glide across the surface to the water... Surface of the water like a surfer? Oh. He's, she's talking about um, the... What? What are they called? Oh yeah, hovercraft. Oh. I got the idea by seeing one of my old men skating on the surface of a lake with some kind of blessing. Genius, right? <laughs> Wait, did he just, she just say one of my old... <laughs> because there's so many Artoria. <laughs> That's why. One of them. <laughs> and last but not the least, a company with a ship. I still can't make heads and tails of. That's why it's so fascinating. Oh, I got the idea from reading one of Kyokte Bakin's old yarns. Bakin, we're going to get to see Bakin in the, the near future, I think. Yeah, in the upcoming events. So, yeah. It said, there was once a ship called Utsurobune or Urobune that washed up on the shores of Hitachi province way back in the day. Apparently, it was made of iron, had windows and looked like nothing nobody had seen. Pretty weird, right? Intriguing, right? Hearing about things that makes me want to jump in and start painting. So, if it's possible, I was hoping you could actually build one of those ships so I can paint it properly. You know what? I'm I'm I'm, attra I'm attracted to this proposal. Like the other two are okay, but this this should be interesting. 
I'll probably go with Hokusai's, you know, model. I don't know how it's put together or how it works or any of that stuff. But it, I'd be mighty get grateful if you made it and let me get a look. I think I see why you're so interested in these toys now, Da Vinci. <laughs> hey, I admitted my bias and right of our front, right? Yeah? Besides, I figured I could get away with throwing at least one in just because I liked it. Man, I really would love to see one of those mysterious Usurogume. We have no experience with naval battles, so we are counting on you to decide as usual. You don't mind, right, sister? Sister? Oh, so, so, sorry, me. Uh, I guess I spaced out a little there. So, so yes, uh, there you have it. We need to build a ship before we can embark on the last battle. All aboard the hype train, uh, ship. Hmm. Something is bothering her, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, I feel like I might need to farm here. I doubt I will have enough. Oh, the first one would have been enough, but oh god. What do I need? The yellow ones. A hundred of them, that's a lot. Oh god. Uh... Nah, I need the, I need to see the Usurubune. Like, I would have just went with the first one, but I need to see that. So I'll just be back after farming a little bit, just a minute. And I am back with a little bit of farming. I have been able to reach the amount and this is the one, isn't it? Yeah, Utsurobune, yeah. There we go. Oh. That, that's an interesting... Right, okay. <laughs> oh, according to Kyokute Bakin's novel, Douwen Shosetsu, on the morning of February 22nd in the third year of Kyowa, AD 1803 in the west, a strange boat-like object was discovered on the shores of Harayadori, coast of Hitachi province and brought inland. It looks like a UFO. The boat was shaped like a container with glass fitted top and hull composed of several iron plates. And when they peered through the glass. Okay. What? What happened? Okay. Is this what happened? Santa Claus came out? Alright. Ta da! They found a girl who looked like nothing they'd ever seen. They'd ever seen, clutching a mysterious block box close to her chest. Is that why you brought Lily with you? <laughs> the whole reason I'm here is because I wanted to paint this Usurabune boat thing. And I need a model if I'm gonna paint this passenger properly. Hmm, it really is an intriguing mystery. I mean a ship made from glass and iron in the Edo period and one shaped just like stereotypical UFO. Yeah. Maybe it was a space alien or some time travel. Wait, is this actually real? Like, is this like an actual something that actually happened? I'm guessing because, you know, they're talking about Bakin and... Right. I also really want to know more about this box she was holding. Was it a terminal of some kind or maybe? Wouldn't it have also been a Christmas present? Hmm, I don't know about that. The story says she never let go of the box or even let anyone else touch it. Nobody could understand her, so they figured she must have been some kind of pre princess from some foreign land and decided to let sleeping dogs lie, so to speak. Then what happened to the girl and the thing? In the end, they just sent the girl back out to sea. Really? What? That's terrible, that poor girl. No, wait, it's still possible she may just have been a Santa who got the wrong... Yeah. Okay. She never let go of her boss, so she must have been guarding it with her life. I'm just going to choose to believe she eventually found the right house to deliver it to. Way to go, Santa! Love that positive thinking. <laughs> anyway, getting back on track. How'd the test run go? Oh, right. Open sesame. Wow. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> and this day, it's us. We're in the box. I like small spaces. They're soothing. That's why I like this boat a bunch too. It didn't rock that much at all and it was plenty fast enough. I think it could make a great sled. 
I guess that means this design site based on the book and the Usurebune engine I came up with to fit it work to fit it work well together. How I got them to work so well together is a trade secret though. But basically all I did was copy what the Utsurabune was set to look like and retrofitted it with something that would get it moving no matter what. I didn't mean for the prototype, I just threw together for testing purposes to get us talking about what the original must have been like. Just like the mysterious ship remains a mystery, secret mechanisms should remain a secret as well. Unless those secrets are revealed as a result of a proper scientific investigation of course. Well, I don't care how much it works, long as it looks like the original. Alright model, why don't you start by putting one foot on the ship? And can you give me a look that says you're just setting foot in a foreign land? Surprise, scare, anxious, that sort of thing? Huh, you mean you really do want me to model for you? Uh, reindeer? Would you mind indulging her just for a bit? Thanks, don't worry, this won't take long. I'm a mighty fast painter. This is so embarrassing. But if it'll help you, reindeer, then okay. At any rate, it looks like the Utsurabune is working fine. Now, we just have to gather our forces and get ready for the final battle. Okay. Did I end it here? Or maybe, you know what, let me see. If there's one section, then I'll continue. If there's like multiple arrows. No, one arrow. Let's do this. Eve of the decisive battle. Hmm. Maybe I'll go for a little walk now that I'm away. Will we meet Eshkigal again? Huh? Is that? Oh, the drunk sister. <sighs> oh, Fujimaru. G good evening. Is everything okay? I suppose that's a silly thing to ask. Uh, how about you? I overheard you sighing. Honestly, I just couldn't sleep. No, that's not it. Servants don't even need to sleep. It's more that I just cannot seem to relax. Is this about the battle tomorrow? That obvious, huh? Yes, that's right, I'm worried, or maybe I should say scared. You know what happened with my rebellion when I was alive, right? In the end, I... we couldn't win. I didn't have any regrets though, rebellion was the only choice I had, even so. That doesn't change the fact that my rebellion failed and everyone who followed me into battle was killed. I basically killed them all myself, even me, my only sibling. Mm -hmm. I've always been faint of heart. Maybe the con would have been better off if I had never gotten involved. Maybe there's no possible way I can win. That's been going around my mind non-stop. I certainly do my best to play the part around everyone else though. I've always been good at that sort of thing. I've been doing it for a long time. It's really the only thing I'm good at. But just for that, I can't. I can't believe I'm here right now. What could I possibly have done to be engraved into human history and become a heroic spirit? Was it my acting? My ability to keep pretending everything was fine? None of that has anything to do with being strong or winning battle. Even now, that's no guarantee we can win this fight. That's what scares me. What if I get everyone killed again because I refuse to stay in my place? I'm not a great king. I'm just scared weak little girl playing the part of a strong capable leader. I'm not a real hero. I shouldn't even be here. I must be some sort of mistake. I can't stop thinking about it. Well, I think you're a great hero. Don't forget, you've also got a dependable sister. Us. And them. <laughs> Healthy stay? What's boss boss sad? Let's make sure we all win tomorrow, okay guys? Of course, I'm totally gonna win. <laughs> yeah, you're right. A king needs to believe the same things everyone else does. I guess that's usually the other way around, huh? I'm sure the really strong kings can get everyone to believe in a single dream. But maybe it's alright for a king to just act proud. One who gets her strength from everyone else and from what they all believe in. In exchange, I can be the only one who worries. And besides, there are some things you can only do perfectly when you're acting. Like a perfect brave front that puts everyone else's fears and concerns at ease. Yeah, true. So that's what I'll do. I'll protect everyone else from worrying. I'll take on all their fears, concerns and obligations and tuck them away deep in my heart. Let's all do our best there, everyone. <laughs> okay.
I have to revise my original plan to make use of them. Okay. The tank resident continues to produce precious bait, yet without any sign of weight gain. What? Tank resident? But no matter what, but no matter, I still have my next best plan. Contrary to my expectations, the valuable bait has grown quite a lot in the tank, to the point I can no longer ignore it. So then, even if I can no longer achieve my initial goal, I must remember that the bait is valuable. No matter who harvests them. Interesting. Okay, now I'm going to end it here. Because next one will probably be the final battle. Or, like, before the final battle, something like that. Which section are we in? Yeah, this one's a big one. 17, 18, and then thing I, I, I think then the epilogue. So we're almost at the end. Yeah, I'm going to end it here. Any other notes got unlocked? No, that was it. That 90... Level 90 load is, load is the only one that got unlocked. Alright, so there you go guys. That was today's video on uh, Water Monster Crisis. And yeah, we're almost wrapping up. This is a mess. You can see like, it's like all over the place. <laughs> we have this UFO kind of thing. Then we have the, uh, we have the armor, the Genji armor, the Genji weapon. This UFO thing, this, this futuristic like thing. Then we have a pagoda, we have an arcade center, and then we have the Usurabune. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, oh no, yeah, that's it. That's all. So, yeah, there you go. So, that is it, guys. I will end this here today. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know. I'll check them out. And that is it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll be back probably the day after you know with another video um we still have time i think we have 12 days left we'll be easily be able to do the final few section and i think then there will be like a few other sections where you can get the welfare circuit as far as i can remember so all those stuff we can do in these 12 days more than enough time so yeah i'll see you guys not tomorrow the day after tomorrow probably so yeah until then goodbye and have a nice day